Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So a lot of people have been asking me, Red Eagle, you need to make some more primary challenger videos. Let's stop with the red wave videos and uh, let's get back to policy. And I really want to. Don't get me wrong, I really want to, but... Uh, there's just so much good news. Every week it seems like there's another white pill for the Republican Party's chances in the 2022 midterms that I just feel as if it needs to be analyzed. I will be talking about policy, strategy, the best candidates. We're going to get into all of that, but this is just a metric. So when we talk about the policy, we talk about the candidates, and then we combine it with the energy being on the right side then I think it's a winning formula. So we're going to be doing both. But right now, what do we see here? Last night's election results out of several key states at the state legislature level. It is impressive, the results and the overperformances for the Republican Party. So we are going to get into this. But first, this video would not be complete if I did not tell you guys about my very good friends over at Noble Gold. Now, inflation's a thing of the past, right? But last month's inflation in the U.S. had the highest rise in 29 years, so it's not really a thing of the past. And with rising food and gas costs, it's an urgent problem if you're thinking about retiring soon. You need an inflation dam to stop your savings and assets from eroding in value. Noble Gold's expertise in retirement planning and IRAs means their team of specialists is your first stop. Call them about this month's offer of a one-ounce American Eagle pure silver-proof coin with an IRA on noblegoldinvestments.com. Again, that is noblegoldinvestments.com. So more Republican overperformance yet again last night. Now, here's some caveats. People are going to say turnout was low. That is true. However, it doesn't matter what side is turning out. That's really what we have to pay attention to because typically midterm years have a lower turnout than presidential years for obvious reasons. Now, it is true that these margins in 2022 are not exactly going to be as lopsided as they were this time in most of these races. But still, Republicans overperforming in them is a very good sign for the 2022 midterms because, like I said, we saw this in 2017 across a lot of different elections. We saw it in 2018, early 2018. Democrats were overperforming by 20, you know, 25 points in a lot of these special elections. And even though they weren't able to, you know, win some high profile races like Kansas's fourth, it was still a massive overperformance from their 2016 result. So as you can see here, there are three key elections. Now, there was another one that was a runoff in Georgia between two Republicans. I don't really believe that needs to be analyzed too much. But what we have here. We'll start off with Wisconsin because this is the one where Republicans did not really overperform in that much. Now, with 97% reporting, Republicans were only winning by 8 in a district where Trump won by nearly 11. Now, keep this in mind. That was still with 97% of the vote reporting. If you look at the final end results, Republicans roughly won by 10, roughly in line with Donald Trump. So you could say maybe they underperformed by a little bit, but you also have to understand that at that part of the state, which is the driftless area, that is an Obama-Trump area. There are a lot of swing voters there. The past Republican was very popular. He leaves office. It is now an open seat, and the margins dipped a little bit, which is true. But the fact is compared to other typically like statewide officials such as Congress people, they were not getting Trump's margins in 2020, 2018, and 2016. And also, Wisconsin is a state that is more immune to midterm waves than most. In fact, 2018, it was extremely close, just as close as it was in 2020. Um, in 2010, even, it was, you know, fairly close in 2010 at the governorship level and a, a lot of these congressional races. So um, I wouldn't look into that too much and say it's a downside. Republicans should have overperformed there a little bit. And people are going to say, well, maybe that is because, you know, a lot of Trump voters have a lower educational attainment and they're not likely to turn out in a special election like this. Well, uh, that wasn't exactly the case in a place like Alabama which is the next race we'll get to, Alabama's 14th, which is a Trump plus 42 district, and Republicans win 90.2 to 9.8. 
Now, that is very impressive, and we see this throughout. We saw Republicans overperform in several of these Alabama races, uh, Alabama's 14th. Now, eventually, the margin went down a little bit to 80 to 19, but still, there was from a Trump plus 42 seat, uh, when all of the votes were fully counted, it was Republicans plus 61. That is extremely impressive, and we see this throughout Alabama. And you could say that, you know, the white working class voters in the state are extremely energized and maybe black voters don't really feel that excited to turn out as much as they did in years past because they may be a little bit disillusioned even with the Biden administration for some reason. I'm not saying they're going to vote Republican, but their energy level among typically Democratic groups is lower and Republicans are doing slightly better even with them. And those Republican groups and the, and the pro-Trump groups are turning out in massive numbers, at least comparatively speaking. Obviously, it was a low turnout election. But the fact that Republicans are winning with the group that does turn out, because a lot of the elections in 2017 and 2018 were low turnout elections, and the Democrats were winning with them. It shows that the incumbency disadvantage is catching up with the Democrats. So that is what I'm trying to say. We'll get to the primary challengers videos pretty soon. But the bottom line is red wave must happen. It has to be an authentically red wave. Uh, it cannot be a red wave of rhinos. We don't want a rhino wave. But the fact that the groundwork for a red wave is there, and you guys understand that, I think people are going to be a little bit more energized, and then we could talk about which candidates you need to be selecting. So Georgia's 34th, the other high-profile one. This is arguably the most impressive one of the night because Trump won this by four uh, in uh, 2020, Purdue won it by a little bit more than Donald Trump did. It is a suburban area in Cobb County that has moved drastically away from the Republicans. Well, not last night, 63 to 37. And I'm not saying that uh, Georgia is going to come back or anything like that because the trends in the Atlanta suburbs are detrimental. And that is going to be the next documentary. But it is important to understand the fact that Republicans can win the state in 2022 at the governorship level, at the Senate level, because Republicans seem to be the ones energized right now. Because you look at all of the pressing issues like the economy with inflation, with gas prices, and you look at even education, Republicans are dominating the narrative by cracking down on things such as critical race theory. And there's many other concerns that have been raised about a wide variety of issues. Immigration, you have a border crisis. A lot of people want election reform as well. And the only way that that stuff is going to come into fruition and that you can put a check on Biden's power, uh, other than, you know, rely on Joe Manchin is to actually get out and vote in the midterms and have a red wave and in the primaries, which I think are even more important than the actual election because you get to replace people like Lisa Murkowski, John Thune, uh, James Lankford in the Senate. You get three authentic conservatives and, you know, John Boozman in Arkansas. You know what they're doing there? You have Jan Morgan, who ran and did very well against Hutchinson in 2018 for somebody that didn't have a high name recognition. Now they know that she's going to beat Boozman, so they put in this other candidate who was a former football player and uh, essentially trying to block her out. Uh, no pun intended, or you could say pun intended, doesn't really matter. But you see this here. The energy is insane. The shift is insane. I mean, it's like, you know, Republicans outperforming by over, you know, 20 points, 22 points in, in Georgia, 23 points in Texas. I mean, you could look at this and it's, it's very impressive to see. Democrats are going to do a little bit of coping about this. They're going to be saying that, uh, you know, it's a low turnout election and they're going to say, oh, look at Wisconsin, even though we already talked about that earlier in the video and they roughly performed in line with Trump. But overall, it seems as if that was the exception to the rule, if anything. And overall, the energy is by far on the Republican side. And a red wave does seem to be inevitable every single day that goes by. Uh, definitely, we have over a year until the election. But we're under a year from some of these primaries that are going to be taking place as well. But overall, we are in the off-season, essentially, of elections. But it seems as if when we do see these little blurbs pop up here and there across the country, doesn't matter if it's Alabama, Georgia, Texas, 
Wisconsin, etc., Republicans appear to be in very good shape moving forward. And we will continue to monitor the situation and we will see what happens leading up to the 2022 election. But overall, you cannot look at these results and say, this is bad for the Republican Party. You can, however, look at these results and say, okay, maybe Democrats should be a little bit worried. They're not really getting high turnout in, in, a, lot of these, in a lot of these elections, these special elections. So uh, clearly there is a little bit of electoral fatigue, and you can't stop it. You can't change it. Electoral fatigue will almost always be a thing. It will almost always exist. There are some rules in politics that don't change, and the incumbency disadvantage really is one of them. So you look at Georgia, Wisconsin, Alabama, across the country, and Republicans are doing pretty well, we could say, uh, in a wide variety of these elections. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.